requires a deep understanding of place value, which your students will develop over time as they are exposed to multiple representations of numbers. A few years ago, I was working in a district that wanted us to get away from the alligator method when it came to teaching comparing numbers. This was because they wanted grade, all of our grade levels to be using the same vocabulary when teaching these skills. It was when I made that shift and transition away from the alligator method that I started to see a bigger learning shift with my students when it came to understanding numbers. In this video, I'm gonna show you a simple strategy that I used for teaching comparing numbers. So if you are ready, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button below, and let's dive in and get started. Now, before I share this strategy with you, I want to express that I do think it's okay to still relate comparing numbers to the alligator, to show that the alligator always eats the bigger number. I think that this is great for primary grades because it's such a good visual for them. But however, I do see why upper elementary teachers aren't a fan of this strategy, which is why I think it's so important that we expose our young learners to a variety of strategies when it comes to solving problems and comparing numbers so that they are set up and prepared for grade levels to come. Now, comparing numbers can be tricky, especially when it comes to identifying the correct symbols with the correct vocabulary term, such as greater than or less than. And I started using a strategy for comparing numbers called the dot method, and it was a game changer. So now let me show you how it works. The dot method for comparing numbers is actually really simple. Let me show you how it works. You're gonna have your students write the two numbers that they are going to compare, or they might already be pre-written. So let's say we are gonna compare the numbers 316 to 524. Now, we want to ask our students not just, okay, which one is the bigger number or which one is the smaller number, but we want them to be able to explain their thinking. So if we were looking at this problem, 316 and 524, and we wanted to compare them using symbols, the first question that I would ask is what place value within our numbers are we going to look at first? So the first thing we want them to recognize is that we're going to look at the three and the five, but these numbers three and five, they don't actually represent the number three and the number five because of their place value, they're in the hundreds place. So our three represents 300 and our five represents 500. So we want them to be able to explain their thinking that they know that 524 is greater than 316. Now, when it comes to comparing numbers, they have to draw symbols and it can get really tricky. And students tend to get confused on which way they should be drawing the symbols correctly to go along with the correct vocabulary term. So this is where the dot method comes into play. They are going to draw two dots next to the larger number. So the first thing they need to identify is the larger number. They're gonna draw two dots next to it. Then they're going to add a single dot next to the smaller number. Then they are going to draw lines to connect the dots to form the correct symbol. Let me show you another example. Let's say we have the number 466 and the number 217. When comparing using the dot method, the larger number or the greater number 
is going to get two dots and the smaller number is going to get one dot. Then they will draw lines to connect the dots to form the correct symbol. Let me show you how students can practice this independently, maybe on work from a workbook or maybe when they're working independently in math stations. So with this activity, kids can practice independently and they are going to roll dice to create a three digit number or two three digit numbers or four digits, two digits, whatever grade level you might be working with. So this type of activity is very easily differentiated. They are going to create their own two numbers to compare using dice. They're gonna compare using symbols, but then they also have to write a sentence using the correct vocabulary term to compare their numbers. So let me show you how this would work. They're gonna take three dice and roll to create a three digit number. So I created 323. Now I'm gonna roll again to create my second number, 631. Now, when we want our students to draw the correct symbol, the dot method can help them not get confused on which way their symbol should be drawn. So remember with the dot method, the larger number is going to get two dots. The smaller number is going to get one dot. Then they can draw two lines to form the correct symbol to compare these two numbers. So now we're actually going to write it out in a sentence and we are gonna start with the first number. So we are gonna say that 323 is less than, because the symbol that we created represents less than, is less than 631. And then it can continue. 662, 362. The larger number is going to get two dots. The smaller number is going to get one. And then they are going to draw two lines to compare. Now, this time the symbol was drawn in the opposite direction. This symbol stands for greater than. The first number in the comparing number sequence, the first number is greater. So 662 is greater than 362. Now let's say that your students are comparing numbers that are equal. So let's pretend that we rolled 444 and 444. They can also, because the numbers are the same, they can draw two dots next to each number and then draw two lines to connect to show that it is equal to. And then they could write 444 is equal to 444. So there you have it. That's the dot method for comparing numbers. If you are looking for more resources that go along with the dot method or just for introducing and implementing comparing numbers in your classroom, all three grade level guided math units for understanding numbers and place value include the dot method with activities to go along with it. So in the description of this video, I will drop links to my first, second, and third grade understanding numbers and place value activities. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. So I know, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and click that bell so that you never miss any new videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.